of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hell Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again! The Lone Ranger and Tonto topped a sharp rise on the Sun Scorch Plateau west of Fort Smith and reined up their horses. A quarter mile to their left, the sluggish Canadian River cut its way through the red, red clay of Indian territory. Directly ahead lay a hard packed wagon trail. It was this that held their attention, or rather the small prairie schooner drawn by a yoke of oxen which was jogging slowly along in the sun. Suddenly, the team of oxen broke into a gallop. They left the trail and headed across the plateau, dragging a wildly careening wagon behind them. Toto, look. Ah, wagon driver, plenty crazy. It's a runaway. Whoever's driving that wagon doesn't know this country. They'll be killed unless we... Come on, Silver! Come up, Scout! Oh, oh, there. Oh, David! I, I can't stop them, Ruth. Beast are suddenly going mad. Uh, oh, there. Oh, David, oh. look. Uh, Two men on horses. Oh. They see us and they're riding this way. That won't help them, sir. Oh, there. Oh. You'll never stop them that way. Uh, Better use a gun before they upset the wagon. I haven't got a gun and I can't... David, oh. he's wearing a mask. And that Indian with him. They must be outlaws. Oh, nothing you can do about it. Tuttle, over to the oh. other side. Uh, pass this, uh, scout. Jump to the uh, brake, Tuttle. Try to pull the pin on the wagon tongue. I hope it's loose. Uh, David! Oh, hold there. Up alongside there, Silver, so I can... Yeah. I've got it, Tonto. Jump! Uh, into it! Now, Tonto, a break. Right the break. The horses, Tonto. Oh, Silver. Oh, Scout. Oh, fellas. Oh, oh thank you. Oh. oh, David. We're safe. We're alive. Just a moment ago, I thought... And so did that... I. We owe our lives to these two men. Glad the tunnel and I happened to see you. The rate you were going, it would have been only a few minutes until yeah, you were... Yeah, but you pulled the coupling pin on the wagon tongue and saved us. I still can't understand why my team of auctions should suddenly... Well, they must have gone mad. No, nothing like that. I just smelled water. They reached the river by now, and they would have taken you and the wagon with them. Yes, but I can't understand. Steady, Silver. Steady, big fellow. 
When did you leave Fort Smith? The day before yesterday. I noticed your water barrels are empty. Both of them sprung a leak. The oxen haven't had a good drink of water for a day and a half. Well, that's true. My wife and I have been rationing ourselves and the animals, too, but... Uh... Run over to the river and bring them back, Tonto. They'll be all right now. <coughs> Get him up, Scout. It isn't your fault. A lot of people make the same mistake. They don't realize that when oxen or any other animals are deprived of water, it's dangerous. Both my wife and I are deeply grateful to you, sir. It's odd that our lives should be saved by outlaws. Hello and I aren't outlaws. But you were wearing a mask. I'm surprised and... that homesteaders like you folks don't carry a gun. Shooting the oxen would have been your only salvation if Tonto and I hadn't come along. Well, I, I haven't carried a gun for several years. My wife and I aren't homesteaders in the usual sense of the word. We're missionaries. Oh, I see. And you're heading west into Indian territory? I've been told that the Cheyennes, if they can be made to understand the teachings of peace as well as they understand war... The Cheyennes? And... You've picked a difficult job for yourself, Mr... I'm David Russell, and this is my wife, Ruth. How do you do? Not that the Cheyennes, or any Indians for that matter, are wholly to blame. When trouble comes, there's generally a renegade white man behind it. I know that. And I hope to prove by counsel and help that all of us are not alike. Oh, oh, Scott, oh, oh. You all right now, Tonto? Uh, oxen drink plenty water. Feel keep good. I don't know how to thank you. Oh, no thanks are necessary, Mr. Russell. And I hope you have a lot of luck in the work you're doing. Thank you, sir. Is that silver easy? I suppose you know that Indian territory is wild country, that you have a dangerous trip ahead of you. Aren't you afraid of it? Why should I be afraid? Many years ago, certain doubting men questioned the great teacher whose scriptures I follow. And the teacher answered them, saying... Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Why, why, yes, that's it. It's my faith that will protect... But you, an outlaw, quoting the Bible... Not and I aren't outlaws. I told you that before. But I don't understand. Ready, Donovan? Me ready. Adios, and good luck to both of you. Come on, sir. Get him up, scout. David, I, I can't understand it. Neither can I, Ruth. They risk their lives to save us. An Indian and a masked man who knows the scriptures. Surely this is an omen of divine guidance. Two years passed. David Russell built his mission house on a low hill overlooking the winter camp of the Cheyennes. His sincerity and medical aid had won him the friendship of Black Horse, the Cheyenne chief. And his sympathy and understanding had gained the loyalty and help of an orphan boy called Little Bear. David worked hard, and he had no way of knowing the exact day that two men in a small covered wagon stopped on the other side of the Cheyenne camp. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, steady. Well, Pete, this is where we bed down for a few weeks. That's a Cheyenne camp right over there. Why can't these redskins pick out a decent spot to pitch their teepees? Nothing here but sand, mesquite, now, and... Now, stop beefing. We're here on business. <coughs> Been two years since I've seen my old friend Black Horse. He'll be glad I showed up. Hey, Todd. Yeah? I heard some talk around town before we left Fort Smith. There's some kind of a missionary hombre up here now. Missionary? Oh, you mean the Bible toter? <laughs> I know all about him. <laughs> now break open one of them cases of whiskey. I'm going over to see Black Horse. I'll take a bottle along. I bring message. Message on paper. Well, who's it from, little bear? Let me see it. So, I might have known. What is it, David? Listen to this. By end of hockey or medicine dance, missionary must go away. Cheyennes no longer want white man who reads from book. If he's not going by end of hockey or Chinese, signed by Black Horse. How can that be a note from Black Horse when he... Can't read or write a word of English? Of course it isn't from him. Who gave you this message, little bear? It come from hand of Chief Black Horse. He not write it, though. White man who sell fire water write message. I thought so. 
I'm going to see Black Horse. Talk to him. Oh, they're a great danger. You go to campground now. Plenty of braves wear war paint. They drink plenty of whiskey. That's all the more reason why I should go. David, not if it's dangerous. Please don't. I've got to talk to Black Horse. The medicine dance itself is bad enough. And if several hundred Indians mix it with liquor, no telling what will happen. If Mr. Russell go to Cheyenne camp, little bear go with him. All right, come on. Please be careful, David. Don't worry, dear. I won't be going wrong. Here. This teepee of Black Horse. Black Horse. White teacher, Mr. Russell, won't make talk. Me bring him. Uh, I got your note, Black Horse. I've come to ask why the great chief Black Horse has written these words to the white man who is his friend. Black Horse make talk on paper. I know, but I can't... That's clear, ain't it, Sky Pilot? What? Oh, you must be Todd Billings. I didn't expect to find you so soon. Why don't you take your hymn book and clear out of this country? Nobody wants to listen to your mealy mouth gab. I came here to talk to Black Horse alone. And you're talking to me because the chief wants it that way. And he wants you to pack all your junk and clear out, you understand? I'll never leave the territory as long as you and your whiskey are here to bedevil the Indians. Yeah. Look here, preacher. Black Horse and the Cheyennes have a different idea. They figure that one bottle of good drinking whiskey is worth a dozen psalm singing critters like you. Why, you filthy. Ooh! No lily fingered Bible tutor is going to punch me and get away with it. I'll sh no. No use, gun. Black Horse, no like. What? what do you mean, Chief? You saw him punch me. Black horse think best white man leave now. This TP big chief. We do what he say. Yes, little bear, I know. There's nothing more we can do now anyway. Come on. Returning from a long trip to the far west, the Lone Ranger and Tonto made camp not far from Cheyenne Village. Oh, it's good to get back to the plains again, Tonto. Uh, me like it. Me think... Horses coming up the trail below us. Smother that fire, Tonto. Uh, me think... <coughs> Plenty Cheyenne brave, them wear war paint. We near Cheyenne camp, and this full moon, time they dance hockey a.m. Yes, I know, but here, Silver, Scout. What's wrong, Kimasabi? We're two white men riding at the head of those Cheyennes. That generally means trouble. Oh, uh, that's fellow. right. <coughs> we'll follow them. Come on, Silver. Get them up, Scout. makes you think that the Indians will cause trouble. They're our friends, and for two years They're our now, friends they... when they're sober, Ruth. Whiskey changes all men. Indians most of all. Now, if we could... Oh, little bear. Let me ride fast from camp. Is anything wrong? At sundown, menace men and braves start hockey a.m. And Billings and other white men ask ten, maybe twelve braves ride with them. They come this way. Todd Billings. Oh, that oh, means... Oh, David, listen. That must be them now. Open the door, little bear. Oh, no, David, don't. Hey, Carson, come on out here. What do you want? You'll find out. If you're man enough, you'd better come out and shoot. No, David, no! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. When David Russell walked out onto the porch of his mission house, he was confronted by a half circle of mounted Cheyenne braves. He noticed that some of them held blazing pine knot torches high above their heads. They were grouped around two white men on pinto ponies. You hear that sky pilot? I said if you're man enough, you'd better come out shooting. I have no gun, Billings, you know that. Good thing for you, you have. How about that book you're always packing around? <laughs> Will that stop a 45 slug? <laughs> what do you want, Billings? Some of the chief's boys and me just dropped by to remind you that you'd better be out of here before the war dance is over. Pull out of here pronto. You understand? I suppose we don't pull out. Then this would give you an idea of what to expect. All right, boys, throw some of those things. David, <laughs> those torches, they'll set the house on fire. Look, the roof of our hospital is already... Oh, I'm going no, to... Ruth. Yes, again, clean oh, daughters, don't move. Now you're talking sense, Parson. You just burn one of them this time. If you don't pack your junk and clear out... Oh, the hospital and everything in it will be... You need that water from well. Throw it on fire. Let it burn, kid. You make a move toward that well, I'll drill you. Little bear, no afraid of you. Me go! Hey, little devil ass! Oh, you won't! Oh, oh Silver, oh, my oh, 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 penny, oh, penny. Penny. Look, Todd, it's now who's a masked outlaw and an inch. Hey, shut my gun away. Hey, that kind of lead sling ain't healthy. Come on, boys, let's buy a move. Get up there. Why you let him get away? Gunfire might have hit some of those braves. We don't want to start a war if we can help it. Steady. Come on, let's help put out the fire. Uh, me help. I don't know who you are, stranger, but a mask, mad Indian. Why well, you're the same two men? Yeah, I'll help you. Truth or Ruth? That's right, Mr. Russell. Been quite a while since that day by the Canadian River. Over two years ago. But I... Oh, Ruth, look who chased Billings away. The man with the man. Seems I always find you folks in the middle of some excitement. Well, thank heaven you find us. Fire all out now. Not burned. Oh, that's good. You were a brave boy, little bear. Oh, me glad to help. Who was the white man who tried to shoot this boy? Todd Billings. He and his partner came here to sell whiskey to the Indians. I see. And I'm afraid he sold most of it. You saw the braves that were with him. Yes. Why was he here threatening you folks? Well, isn't it natural for a liquor peddler to resent a missionary? Well, if you've been here for some time, you must know the chief of the Cheyennes. Can't you go to chief him? Chief is named Black Horse. We were very friendly until Billings came a few days ago. And now they say we'll be killed unless we leave the territory before the end of the hockey a.m. Go on. It's a ceremonial dance that begins tonight and lasts for three days. Listen, you can hear the drums now. Hmm. The fact that Black Horse is in Billings' power makes the situation bad. I know it. Maybe Toto and I can help if you'll give me some more information. Oh, if only you could. If there was just some Come way to be... the house. I'll, I'll tell you everything I can. Parsons' house and started blasting. How do us. I know who the Sky Pilots outlaw friends are? Got in a lucky shot, that's all. Well, what are we gonna do? But I ain't taking any chances with either one of them. I'm gonna break open a few more cases of fire water for Black Horse and his braves. Now you double back to that Parsons house and see what you can find out. Me? Well, what can now I? Keep out of sight and keep your eyes and ears open. All right, get going. All right, but I get up there. Come. All right, you Cheyenne buckaroos. Let's have a drink! <laughs> That's everything that's happened right up to this minute. Hmm. It's a hard problem. This territory belongs to the Indians. If Black Horse orders you to it leave... It is Black Horse. If he wasn't influenced by Todd Billings... You can't he... afford to antagonize almost a thousand Cheyenne Braves. I don't know. I've never felt this way before. But right now, I wish I wasn't a missionary. That I wasn't bound by a code that says, return good for evil. Why, David. If I were just an ordinary man, a man with a gun who could hunt down Todd Billings and... David, we possess something stronger than guns. It's faith. Remember the words of the Bible. Faith overcometh the world. I... I want to believe it. What good is faith against a gun and a pack of whiskey-soaked Cheyenne Indians? If I could only... Your wife is right, Mr. Russell. You have something greater than guns. Tonto and I'll see what we can do. Maybe we can talk to Black Horse. Not in the middle of their ceremonial dance. We can try. Come on, Tonto. Uh -huh. We'll be close by. For the next two days, it might be a good idea for you to stay indoors as much as possible. We will. Adios. Find 
find out? Nothing. Saw the preacher and his wife talking to that Max Gentney engine inside their house. That's all. They still there? Oh, the owl hoot and the redskin pulled out. Couldn't trail him with horses like they're riding. Uh. Now we'll wait till the last night of the dance when all the whiskey's inside the braze instead of the bottles. And all you have to do is put on a black mask like that fancy lead slinger and ride over to the missionary's house. Put on a black... Now listen, Todd, I don't think... Of course think you that... don't think. I'll take care of that. You just do what you're told. next two days and nights, the frenzied ceremonial dance of the Cheyennes gained in spirit and momentum. Hundreds of half-naked Indian braves danced in relays to the throb of tom-toms and the wild yells of their medicine men. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had tried in vain to see Chief Black Horse. Failing in this, they kept close watch on the mission house. There had been no sign of Todd Billings. But on the last night of the hockey a.m., Somebody come. Me open door. Wait a minute, little bear. Look through the window first. The tall man who wear masks. That's all right, little bear. I'll open it. We've been expecting Reach, you. Reach, but... Parson, and get him high. I thought I you were not. got much time, Parson, so a gun weapon will be as good as a bullet. Oh, David! Stop squawking. He ain't hurt. I'm just going to borrow your old man for a couple of hours. Now drag him outside. You? I'm oh, warning you. you. Keep your distance. Just going to take the sky pilot over to see his friend Black Horse. Are no, you not too? Oh. Little bear say no. Listen, Redskin, no. I'm... All right! Oh, oh. Little varmint ask for it. Now get out of my way. Oh, Davis! Davis! Oh, Davis! Oh, what's up, Charles? Oh, easy. The Russells are expecting us, Tonto. There's no sign of... Ah, what matter? Sounds like a woman crying. Come on. Mrs. Russell. Oh, you. Oh, it's you. Oh, where's I your husband? A masked man with a gun. We, we thought it was you. We opened the door and... Him, sorry. Little bear. Indian boy. Him shot. Just a minute. It's just a scalp wound. He'll be all right. Who did this, Mrs. Russell? Where's your husband? The man said he was taking David to see Black Horse. Todd Billings? No, it wasn't Billings. I... But I think it was the man who was with him the other night. That means a Cheyenne camp, Toto. That right. Toto and I'll ride over there. We'll find Mr. Russell. Oh, will you? I'm sorry. Oh, never mind. You wait here. Come on, Toto. There's no time to lose. Uh -huh. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. <laughs> Let's get to him before they stop us. Ah. Great Chief Black Horse, my friend and I come to you in peace. Oh, white man, wear a mask. Him, plenty good friend, a red man in all nations. Him, friend of Chief Thundercloud in far north. Speak. You know the missionary who came in peace to your land? Uh. He brought good teachings to your braves, your squaws and your children. He brought white man's medicine to cure sickness. Uh. But another man who sells firewater hates a missionary. Hates him because he teaches peace, not war. Don't pay any attention to that owl hoots gab, Black Horse. I expected to find you, Billings. Where's your partner, the one who shot an Indian boy at the mission house? He's here and so's a Bible toady. Tied up in one of the teepees. There's nothing you can do about it. Maybe. Chief Black Horse. The missionary brought the best teachings of the white man. He brought the truth. Now, don't listen to him, Chief. He's trying to trick you and your people. Come on, man. Come on, man. Speak. Now, this man who sells fire water has captured the missionary. He's a prisoner here in your camp. Uh -huh. I ask you to release him because he has brought only good to you and to your people. No, it's a trick, Chief. Black Horse, there is no trick to the hockey yam, the sacred dance of your people. You have faith in that, don't you? Ah. So it is in this dance that I would ask you now for the life of my friend, the missionary. 
Let the hockey A.M. be the judge. Hey, what do you mean? How can you know which of these white men to trust? Unless the hockey A.M. tells you which is bad and which is good. Oh. Then put Todd Billings and me to the test. Hang around our necks with fine strands of horse hair, the heavy buffalo skulls, that weigh a hundred pounds apiece. Put us in the center of the ring and let us wrestle in Cheyenne fashion to prove our faith. No. No, no, Chief. Don't listen no, no. to him. That's good. Hawala! <laughs> Within a few minutes, the protesting Todd Billings was stripped to the waist, as was the Lone Ranger. Then heavily weighted buffalo skulls were suspended from their necks by a fine hauler of horsehair. They faced each other in a ring with the toes of their right feet touching. This was the severest test of strength and endurance known to the Cheyenne Indians. It was the finale of the hockey AM. At Black Horse's signal, they grasped hands and began the silent struggle of sheer strength, each man trying to push the other off his feet. It didn't last. For suddenly, Todd Billings cried out, No, I can't stand it. Now let me go. Let me go. Indian guards will take you and your murdering partner to the nearest United States Marshal. You'll both stand trial. All right, all right, anything you say. Just let me go. Please. <laughs> there. Have you heard what he said, Black Horse? Be here. Man with mask, plenty brave. Missionary must teach truth. Black Horse and Cheyenne believe. Thank you, Black Horse. Come on, Toto. Let's find Mr. Russell and take him home. It was a miracle, David. Truly a miracle. I don't think our friend would call it that, Ruth. We've won back the trust of the Cheyennes. Yes, we've regained that in our lives. All because of an object lesson in faith. The faith of a masked man whose name we don't even know. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.